From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ropecast. I'm Peter Tischer, and with me is Roger Charlton. Hi, Roger. Hello, Peter. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I see you brought a book here. Isn't that the one you were supposed to recommend to our listeners for Christmas? We Yeah, we recommended quite a few books, and well, this one I held back. Why is that? Didn't you think it was of any use for a language learner? It's certainly useful, but it's not an easy read, and uh, maybe not the sort of thing for Christmas time. So what would it make it interesting for a language learner if you were to look at it? The thing is, what we probably don't realize or don't consider most of the time as language users is we are constantly using metaphors. We have metaphors as one of the key areas of language. And that's what the book talks about, metaphors? It does indeed, yeah. Uh Okay, what's it called? Metaphors We Live By. Okay. And how come? Well, it points out very early on that... um, We grow up with metaphors. We don't even realize they're metaphors, but these are very closely tied to our culture. So metaphors, when we examine them carefully, contain a lot of culture. Our basic assumptions, our value systems, are evident through metaphors. Um, And in turn, it concerns our language as well. Absolutely, yeah. Can you give us an example? I think, first of all, metaphor is that we experience one thing through another. So there is a kind of something in the way that we use to interpret the world around us. And this something Mm -hmm. is also handed down to us. So we accept it like the language itself. We don't Mm -hmm. stop to think about it most of the time. A good example would be time is money. Mm-hmm. There's a whole lot of metaphors based on that basic so idea. So money represents time in this case. And if you just stop to think about this for a moment, uh-huh. um, until modern times, even in Western countries, nobody would have expressed this idea, time is money. Until industrialization, it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. It's only with this huge change in society that we call industrialization, the Industrial Revolution, that time is associated with payment. Okay. Okay, I get that. But, okay, that's one proverb. Time is money. Yeah. But well, does that produce anything else? I shall, mean, I, shall I bombard you with a few examples? Okay, go. <laughs> Shoot <I'll>, me. <laughs> not too fast, I hope. I don't have the time to give you. Uh-huh. Yeah? Okay. But I'm so giving you something. If I'm right. thinking of time as mm. something, a gift uh-huh. here. So that okay. means it's worth a commodity, something. commodity, basically. How do you spend your time? Spend time. Like spend money. We use the same verb. Uh huh. Yeah? Okay. So again, time is a commodity. It's worth something. And you we can, can give spend, it away. We can spend it or we can save time. Right. Yeah. I've invested a lot of time in this. Mm-hmm. You're running out of time. Uh-huh. Like you're running out of money. Okay. Uh, you need to budget your time. <laughs> right. You have a time budget. Right. He's living on borrowed time. <laughs> oh, whoa. That's, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, you're not just saying it. There's a lot of terms that have to do with money. Some more. I lost a lot of time when I was ill. <laughs> it's <laughs> okay. a crazy idea, isn't it? Right. To lose time. Right. By the way, it's so crazy. You can't really ever lose time because no. time is basically the only thing that you always have the same amount of. Yeah. That's the weird thing. And then when we're doing something together, you, you end by saying, well, thank you for your time. For giving me your time. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Th- here it is, a valuable commodity uh-huh. in our way of seeing things. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. And so, it doesn't, doesn't have to be like that. And I'm sure it wasn't like that in medieval times. So there's a central metaphor. Mm-hmm. Money stands time for time. Yeah. And that sort of spawns, produces other metaphors exactly. to go along with. So it's a whole network yeah. of net metaphors that there are. Isn't the, isn't those, aren't those the same all over the place in all languages? Well, let's take a different example, which may show you that it doesn't have to be like this universally. Um, uh-huh. Argument is war, uh-huh. would be another of these basic notions. 
-hmm. And I don't think that would apply to all cultures around the world. We see argument as there are two sides and they are face to face. They're confrontational. Mm -hmm. And lots of the expressions we use are really from warfare. Uh, you, you, you attack your opponent's position. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. You win you, an argument. You win. If you defend your case. You defend your position. Uh huh. Okay. Um, you use strategy mm -hmm. in arguing. You talk about a new line of attack mm -hmm. in argument. Uh, you talk about gaining ground or losing ground in an argument. Mm -hmm. and all of these come from warfare, from battles. Wouldn't that be sort of a hint also to our listeners? If you get that down, that makes it maybe easier to remember some of the expressions exactly. that revolve around a certain concept. Yeah. We talk about semantic fields when we're thinking about individual words, and this is sort of related. There's a whole area of meaning that belongs together. Uh -huh. And if you have this, this kind of um, concept to bring them together, it would, it would, I think, make language learning easier. Or at least it would make understanding the culture easier. That's a very, very interesting topic. Uh, unfortunately, um, I think I'm using a metaphor again. We are running out of time. <laughs> right. I don't know whether that has to do with money. But why don't we just go on about this topic in our next podcast and say goodbye for now. Let's do that. Okay. Bye-bye. Listen to us in two weeks again when we'll be again talking about metaphors in language. Bye from me too. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.